well, how y'all doing today? It's Saturday, July 6th. And uh, me and Allison came out here today to Hunter Complex out here on Highway 16 uh, to walk a little bit. We was, going, we was going to try to walk a mile or a mile and a half today, try to get out and move a little bit. And uh, we came here today and we did our little morning prayer right here <clears throat> in the truck. And uh, I, I had some I had some thoughts going through my I got a lot of thoughts going through my mind. You know, I'll, I'll chase a rabbit hole real quick. So I, I try to you know, focus and lock in here. But as I was sitting in church the other day, I was having a thought run through my mind about a sermon a while back that changed my life. That it was one of the ser you know it was one of the sermons that really impacted me so heavy <clears throat> and really really pushed me toward being a better Christian. Um, and I I kind of thought about that in church a couple Sundays ago, but then I kind of forgot about it. I was going to mention it to Allison and tell her the, about the the sermon that changed my life. <clears throat> and then for some reason this morning. Uh, I just got to thinking about it as we were praying. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to do a video on it. I wanted to share it with others. Um, and I wanted to do a video soon, but me and Allison got to talking and said, why not right now? Why not do it right now while it's fresh on my mind? So we're coming to you live from the Hunter Complex parking lot here on Saturday, July 6th. And I, Allison's my cameraman. Yep. I'm represent, representing Dustin today. This is our little view. Just uh, try to keep your... Just make sure to try to keep your fingers just like in the in the middle up here and don't don't put it down here. Yeah. On either of the sound things. Because I don't know if that's This is the view. We got some coffee and water. And Dustin's about to give y'all some good advice. I already already basically told Allison the sermon, but it uh I was in here crying like a baby, so I'll try to keep it together during this because I'm telling you <sighs> it's some good stuff. So a while back, this is two years ago, me and Allison had went to a, a, a Georgia football game. I don't even remember who they were playing. But uh, we went and watched the game, and my pastor and his wife also went to the game. They were on the whole other side of the stadium. <clears throat> but anyway, we both were there, watched the game. Uh, you know, we texted back and forth a couple times about the game, but we were, we, we, we were at the game, but we weren't, like, together. They were just over there, and we were over here. And anyway... You know, the game was great. Of course, Georgia won. Dustin. All they do is win. But this video ain't about Georgia today. I, I know you, you're already thinking, of course, the greatest sermon of his life was something about Georgia football. Well, that's the example, but it's it's a lot greater thing than Georgia football. I can promise you that. Uh, anyway, they won the game. We come back, you know, had a great weekend. The next day, we go to church. It may, may have even been the next Sunday. And our pastor just preached a, such a wonderful message and used such a wonderful example uh, using the Georgia football team. He said, you know, I, I'm trying to say it as basically as possible so this video isn't 30 minutes. <clears throat> but he basically said, you know, as I sat there and watched that, that football game, and, and, and there's 100,000 people in this stadium. There's 95,000 people in the stadium. And every time they do something good, it's just the crowd just goes crazy. <sighs> you know, he said, I wondered what it would feel like if they come and got me out of the stadium and put on a Georgia uniform on me and they li they lined me up and they snapped the ball and they took it and handed the ball to me and the offensive line blocked and the wide receivers blocked and I ran the ball in and scored a touchdown for the Georgia Bulldogs. If I literally got in the game and scored a touchdown for the Georgia Bulldogs, if, if they lined me up at wide receiver and they snap the ball and I run a little route and I get around the defender and they throw the ball up in the air and I catch it in the end zone and come down for a touchdown and the crowd goes crazy, <sighs> how would that feel? How would, would that just not be the most amazing thing ever to, to get in the game? Yeah. And to be able to score a touchdown, you know, how how awesome would that be? Just if you really can picture that, you know, if you if you're a Tennessee fan, if you're an Alabama fan, if you're a Florida Gators fan, well I don't know if there is any Florida Gators fans. But those might be extinct. Those might be extinct. It just any any your favorite team, imagine scoring a touchdown for them, how awesome that would be. And then he he transitioned it to being on the Lord's team, 
you know, we got to, we got to get on the Lord's team. We got to, you know, how would it feel to be on the Lord's team and, and for the Lord, he's the quarterback, you know, him to snap the ball and to turn around and to hand the ball to you and to you to go and to, to score a touchdown on the Lord's team, you know, how, how would it feel to score a touchdown and by, when I think of scoring a touchdown, I think of leading somebody to Jesus. I think of, I think of, I think of either speaking or mainly living in such a way that you lead somebody else, whether it be one of your friends, one of your coworkers, one of your family members, a, a stranger, and literally lead them to Jesus Christ to make a good play on the Lord's team. And that sermon just, it, that sermon just registered so deep with me. And I swear that that was probably two, two and a half years ago. And that sermon led me to be a better Christian. You know, I, I realized it's not just about it's not just about me going to church and it's not just about you know what all I what, what all the accolades I can get and all the awards I can win it's it's about it's about leading somebody else to Jesus like it's it's selfish of us to to know we're going to heaven one day and not to share it with somebody else and he told us we got to get on the Lord's team and we got to make a play we got to get a first down we got to keep the chains moving we got to go we got to you know, we even got to play defense. We got to play defense against Satan. We got to pray, and we got to we got to stop those forces from from scoring on us. You know, every every person that enters in, every person that dies without Jesus is going to hell. We're all going to face God one day. And the more people that we can we can lead to Christ in, by the way we live and by the way we speak and act and and talk, it's a big deal. It's a big deal because the uh, the Lord's team, you know, they're the real number ones. They're the real champions. The real champions are going to be the ones that one day that the Lord grabs by the face and says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. We got to get on the Lord's team. We got to score a touchdown for the Lord. How would it, how would it feel to score a touchdown for the Lord? How would it feel to lead somebody else to Christ? To, to tell them that, that Jesus Christ came and paid our sin debt by living a perfect, spotless, sinless life, dying on the cross, to pay for our sin debt and resurrect and on the third day out of the grave for our justification. You know, how how awesome would that be? We gotta we gotta we gotta get on the Lord's team, you know, and that 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 message just really struck me so hard because I could I could visualize it so well. I was so into the scoring a touchdown for Georgia and then he said, you know, what if you scored a touchdown for the Lord? That's the best team. And it was it was just so powerful. I I could never I could never say it how our pastor preached it, but I just thought that others would like to hear that. And there was one other thought going through my mind this morning as I prayed. You know, I was thinking about the disciples when they came to Jesus. And this is just like us. And, and if we were the disciples back then, we'd have done the same thing because we're so full of pride and we're so full of ourselves and we're so full of what can we do and what, what, what medals can we win and what can we do to get, to get acknowledged. Every, everything that we, and that's just our human nature. We're, we're, even though we're saved, by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, we're still robed in our flesh. We're still prideful, and we still we still have a tendency to go downhill and, and to and to to see you know what can we do? How can we be number one? You know how how can I be number one? How can I be the best? How can I be the the greatest? And the disciples came to Jesus, and they they were they were like bickering between themselves. They were they were really like almost arguing between themselves over who was the greatest. And you know they come to Jesus and they say, "Hey Jesus, Lord." Who will be the greatest among us? You know, they wanted to know who was going to be the ruler over the disciples. Who was going to be like the leader? Who was going to be the ones telling the other ones what to do? I'm, I'm the boss. I'm the, I'm the, who is going to be the greatest of the disciples, Lord? And isn't it so like us to be so full of pride? And isn't it so like Jesus? Jesus come to this earth and everything that we thought we knew, everything that we thought we had figured out, he showed us every way that we felt. It was really the opposite. It was the other way around. We were wrong. And he showed us a way that we never knew before. He showed us a love and a mercy and a grace that we had never known before. Jesus Jesus told him, you know, he went he went through the he went through the the, the old sayings, you know, you, you've heard he said, You've heard of times past, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, if someone was to hit you, turn your cheek and give them the other cheek. You know, you you've heard sin for sin, you know, you've heard he said all kinds of things. I'm going off on a tangent here, but everything that we thought we knew, you know, just like we thought, you know, 
one of the disciples come to him and said, Lord, how many times can I forgive my brother? You know, if he, if he sins against me seven times, am I supposed to forgive him all seven times? And Jesus said, no. He said, you're supposed to forgive him 70 times seven. 70 times seven is 490. And some people would literally take that and say, well, what if he sins 491 times? That's not the point. The point is an unlimited amount of forgiveness. Why is that? How, how come we have to unlimitedly forgive somebody who sins against us and does us wrong? I know why. Why? Because he forgives us. Because Jesus unlimitedly, over and over again, every day forgives us of our sins. You see, we thought we had it figured out. Lord, who is going to be the greatest among us? Who's going to be the ruler of us? And Jesus said, <laughs> you got it all wrong. He said, the greatest among you will be that will be the one who serves the most the one who the one not the one who gets up on top and looks down on the others but the one who gets under the others and lifts the other ones up the one who serves the most will be the greatest among you how about that and you know what it just it got me to cry this morning cuz i got to thinking that the greatest among them at that time was jesus and who did the most serving who paid the debt who 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 climbed on that cross who took the beating the shame the punishment the abuse, the, the agony, the torment, the disappointment. Can you imagine how, and, and this is the cause that he came into the world for. You know, this is why Jesus came. This is why Jesus came. He came, he came to die for our sins and he knew that. But can you imagine the disappointment of living a perfect, spotless, sinless life? And the whole reason for that is because the sacrifice for our sins had to be had to be perfect spotless sinless it's just like in the old testament when they were, they had to, to make an atonement for their sins they'd have to pick the spotless lamb or the spotless ram you know the payment for our sins had to be somebody that was innocent it had to be innocent blood because the wages of sin is death the, the price for sin is blood and jesus gave it all on that cross for us. The disciples come to him saying, Lord, who will be the greatest among us? And he said, the greatest among you will be the one who serves. And Jesus didn't just do like we do. He don't just do a lot of preaching. He did a lot of doing. Not only did he tell them the greatest among you will be servant. He said the great, he, 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 he did the most serving himself. He went and died on the cross to pay for our sins. Can you imagine the disappointment of living a perfect, sinless, spotless life? And knowing that even though you did that, that you, you're still going to die the, the death of a crucifixion. They're going to beat you and whip you and rip your flesh open and, and just do all, all manner of things against you. They, they, they covered his head and, and hit him and, and, and beat him and, and they, they made fun of him. You know, they, they said, Lord, since you're the son of God, won't you tell us who just hit you? And it's just an amazing thing. You know, the, the greatest among us is not going to be the one that's clawing their way to the top to look down on all the others. The greatest among us is going to be the one that's clawing our way to the bottom to do something to help somebody else. Jesus told us, I leave the, you know, the disciples said, Jesus, what is the greatest, what is the greatest commandment? What is the greatest of the commandments? And he said, all the other commandments rest on these two. If you're doing these two commandments, you're falling up under these. You're, you're falling up. If you're doing these two commandments, you fall up under all the other commandments. We used to live under Old Testament law, but now we're living under New Testament grace. Jesus fulfilled the law. He is the law. And now we live by the Spirit. But he said, they said, what is the, I go off on tangents, you see. What is the greatest commandment? He said, all the other commandments hang on these two. And these are the greatest commandments. Number one, that you love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. And number two, that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. To love each other. The greatest commandment is love. We have to love one another. And that's just my thoughts this morning. We got to get on the Lord's team and we got to make a play. We got to figure out what we can do to get this first down. We got to get the ball in the end zone. We got to score. We got to we got to win this game. Yeah. We got to win this game. Get on the winning team. I'm glad I went back to that because I thought of another way he put it. And I'm almost done. You know, the Bible tells us that once we're saved, we're more than conquerors. We're, we're already more than conquerors. Our pastor told us last week, the same spirit, when Jesus died on the cross and they laid him in that grave, the same spirit that come by three days later and resurrected his dead body back to life is the same spirit that lives in us. We have the power to do this thing. We have the power. There's going to be persecutions. He told us it's going to get hard. 
You follow me, it's going to get hard. Just like they said in The Chosen. Jesus grabbed Judas by the face, knowing that he was going to betray him. And he said, Judas, are you... He said, Judas, are you ready to do hard things? And Jesus said, I'm ready, Lord. And Jesus knew he was going to betray him. You know, we got to get on the Lord's team. Where was I going with that? I'm glad I got you here today. Well, I'm not a lot of help. I, <laughs> I have... He, uh, my brain goes dead. Let me crank the truck back up and get some air conditioning going. Yeah. Oh, the game's already won. We've already... Can you imagine? The game is over. We're up, we're up by three scores, and there's only like a one minute left on the clock. We got a first down. All we got to do is kneel the ball. Yes. All we got to do is kneel the ball, and we win the game. We're beating them by 23 points, and all we got to do is kneel the ball and win the game. That's all we got to do. Jesus has already came and paid the price. He's already died on the cross. Heaven's already given it all. All we have to do is accept our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All we have to do is call upon the name. The Bible says that anybody who calls upon the name of the Lord, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus will turn no man away. No matter what you've done, no matter how far you've gone, he'll give you life new. He'll put a fire inside of you that you've never had before. Jesus, we've already won the game. The Bible tells us we're already more than conquerors. Even though it's going to get hard, even though we're going to face persecutions, even though we're going to face pains, even though we're going to face heartbreaks in this life, the game is already over. Jesus has already scored all the touchdowns and won the game for us. All we have to do is take the ball, snap the ball, and take a knee and run the clock out. Run! And part of that running the clock out, part of that running the clock out is leading somebody else to Jesus. That's right. And what can we do? We're already saved. We're already more than conquerors. Now we got to get, we got to recruit. We got to recruit. We got to get five star players. We got to get four. Well, that don't really matter. We got to go. We got to reach down to the. We got to get all. We got to get everybody on the team. We every need, star matters. We need everybody. Jesus loves everybody. Even if you're one star. We get judgmental. I'm going down another rabbit hole. But we 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 get judgmental, and we start pointing finger at other people and saying how 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 how, how bad they are and, and how how trashy they are and how low they are and oh these people they're way up too high they're way higher than us so that so they're they're arrogant and they think they're better. Than, Jesus loves all of Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, he died for each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. The highest, the lowest, all the ones in the middle. We got to get out here and get people on the team. All we got to do is kneel the ball. That's right. All we got to do is lead somebody else to Jesus. We got to get on the team. And the greatest among us is not going to be the one who is literally the greatest among us, but the one who serves the most. And who did the most serve in Jesus? If we're going to be more like Jesus, we got to love and we got to serve. That was my thoughts today. I probably have a hundred other things I wanted to say, but... I think it's perfect. Well, we're going to do our walk, and we're going to try to have a good weekend, and we're looking forward to church tomorrow. And uh, I love all of y'all, and, and I'm telling you, the reason that I do these videos, and the reason that I post all the stuff I post on Facebook, and the, the reason that I do anything I do... See, Jesus has come by, and I used to live for me, but now he's given me a new purpose. He's given me new eyes, a new mind, a new spirit. He's given me a new heart. He took my heart of stone and gave me a heart of flesh. My new life goal is that somebody else would see Jesus inside of me in spite of who I am. I don't do this to act like I'm holier than thou or to act like, oh, I'm so smart and I know every way we no. need to be acting that I'm going to show you and you, you're wrong and I'm right. I want somebody else, I, I want somebody to see Jesus. We know we're not perfect and we want to show people where you can come from to where you can be, get to. If you're watching this video and you know me, you know who I am. You know how many times I've failed. I'm telling you, I'm a, I'm a testimony to the goodness and the faithfulness of God. If God can change who I was, He can He can do anything. There is nothing that's too hard or impossible for our God. And I'm trying to tell everybody else about that. I'm trying to score a touchdown. I'm trying yeah. to make a play. That's why that that's why that was the most powerful sermon to be. It registered so deep with me because I know football so well. I wanted to get on the winning team. I want to I want somebody to hand me the ball because I want to get this first down. I want to score this touchdown. I want to lead somebody else to Jesus. That's why I make these videos. That's why we do what we do. Not because we think we're holier than thou. I'm the least worthy. I'm I'm the least worthy. Among all the sinners, I'm in the category of least worthy. But when Jesus died on the cross that day, he died for all sin and unrighteousness. He paid it all. If he didn't pay for all sins, he would have paid for no sins. He paid all sins. And he just said, anybody who will come to me, I will freely give this living water. 
All you have to do is repent of your sins, which means to turn away. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. And I know a lot of us out here today, because I, how do I know? Because I was the same way. The reason we don't turn to Jesus is because we don't want to give up our give up what we want to do in this life. We don't want to give up our sin, basically. If you want to, you want to get down to it. The reason people don't... I think, I think with 80 to 90 percent of people it's not that they don't know about jesus they don't know what to do they don't know how to get saved they don't want to give up their sin to follow jesus they know that when they make that decision to follow jesus they got to give up their their sin i'm telling you that's why i i, I believe that's why i went out into the world and, and continued to sin even though i was already saved at a young age i didn't realize how much fun i could have in the lord i didn't realize all that he had in store for me i didn't realize that he was going to completely cause the scales to fall off my eyes i'm telling you just as much as I used to want to go to the store and get a beer, just as much, just as much as I ever used to want to to, to, to to roll a joint, that's even more powerfully. That's how strongly I want to tell others about Jesus. I'm telling you, when you decide to come follow Jesus, it's going to be the best time of your life. You're going to say, "I should have done this years ago," but you think in your mind, you know, "I'm going to live it up for now. I'm going to do what I want to do for now, and then later on, I'll." I'll come and follow Jesus. I'll do what's right in the end because I'll get saved anyway and it'll all he'll take away all my sin anyway. Well, what you don't realize is, first off, we don't know how much time we got left. Second off, the longer you do that, the more and more hard your heart gets. The more scars you get on that heart, the more walls that Satan helps you build up around your heart and you start to turn your ear away from the things of God. And then something happens one day and, and, and you don't want to face a you don't want to face a God that's looking upon all your sin never have accepted Jesus into your heart because he's going to say depart from me you worker of iniquity I never knew you and he's going to cast you in hell and death and everything in it into the lake of fire and the Bible says that the smoke of their torment will ascend up forever and ever what I just said right there I'm not trying to scare you what I just said right there is the whole reason that I do what I do I don't want to see one of my family members go to hell I don't want to see anybody I hope this video gets into the hands of anybody any video that we make I hope that somebody will see it and I'm telling you from, from somebody who was the worst type of sinner the only way is Jesus Christ. He's the only way. He's the only way. It's that simple. I, well, I love y'all and I hope y'all are having a good day before this video becomes an hour long. Bye, y'all.